Having looked at Rolls-Royce's first half 2019 results, we see little evidence of an improvement. However, before we go on, we must remind you that under Hong Kong SFC regulations, we're not allowed to make recommendations and none of what follows should be construed as investment advice. However, if you are thinking about investing as Rolls-Royce, we suggest you bear in mind the following. The announcement focused on the growing revenues and the 33% jump in operating profit. And apparently this is evidence of the turnaround. Cash flow was negative, but apparently this was a working capital issue, so investors shouldn't be worried. We think things may not be quite as rosy as they're portrayed. The announcement focused on revenue growth and the 33% jump in core operating profit. And this was cited as being good evidence of a turnaround. Now, cash flow was negative, but again, this was explained away as being part of inventory growth and working capital issue. However, when we dug into the detail, we think things may not be quite as rosy as have been portrayed. P&L, this is broken into two parts, engine sales and servicing revenue. Now, engine sales are likely to be stagnant going forward because we're already at a sustainable level as far as management is concerned. So any material growth relies on servicing revenue. This did grow thanks to aerospace being up 28%. Our concern is that a lot of that growth may become from servicing the Trent engine problem. If so, the underlying revenue growth is somewhat more modest than portrayed. And this matters because the growth in operating profit margin simply came from a change in accounting policy, not the turnaround. In fact, without the accounting change and the much talked about cost cutting, margins would have fallen and possibly profits too. This is a problem because despite the growth in engine base, they're clearly not getting any operating leverage out of the business model. Moreover, even these profits look a little dubious because broad capex is still in excess of depreciation and amortization. Now, if these two were matched, Rolls-Royce would have booked a loss. Remember, the depreciation and amortization numbers are simply a management estimation. And if they've proved to be erroneous, it means profits have been overstated. The Airbus A380 program was a good example. In the past, management's booked profits Today, it finds out they're overstated and profits have to be written down. Fortunately for management, these mistakes are booked as exceptional, so they still get paid. Sadly, shareholders are not quite so lucky. Cash flow. A close inspection reveals that working capital generated, not consumed cash. Now, we accept that inventory consumed cash as it's been built in the first half, and this will be reversed in the second half. But the flip side of that is that they received a lot of advanced service payments, which again will start to be consumed in the second half, therefore taking up cash. The real cash drain was that CapEx still exceeds depreciation and amortization, and that there was a cash cost to provisions made in the past. Finally, FX risk. Rolls has a major currency mismatch, which is why they've got $40 billion worth of hedges on their books. The problem is, this has cost them money in the past. Possibly because of this, they're now letting those hedges roll off. Our concern is, this is happening at a recent all-time low for the pound. If the pound recovers, investors will lose out yet again. Simply put, we think Rolls-Royce is still treading water. It's far too early to talk about a real recovery or an increase in dividends. Now we've been through the results and highlighted some of the key numbers and you can access this using some of the links below. Now, if you'd like to know more, please visit our website or send us an email. Alternatively, if you want to keep up to date with our research, subscribe on the link. Thank you very much for your time.